Hey guys, it's the Chad. Changing out the old wiper motor on a 67 to 72 seems like a pretty easy task, but it's not. Why? Because 50 plus years ago, GM wasn't really concerned that you would have to shoehorn yourself down on the floorboard of one of these pickups or stick your hand into places that it was never designed to go. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you several different ways how to remove and install one of these wiper motors in your old ride. So I finally made the decision to sell off what's left of this old 67. Well that and I guess one of my neighbors complained to the city that they don't like all my truck parts being out in the driveway, so lame. But before I can sell the cab, I need to stick the dash back in it. Before I do that though, I thought, man, what a great time to show you guys how to remove and install one of these wiper motors. The 1967 to 72 GM trucks use what they called a three terminal non-depressed rectangular motor. The metal portion, this is going to be the wiper motor, and this plastic portion is going to be the washer pump. The motor has three terminals, and the pump has two. On the face of the motor, you would have this rotating arm. On the top of the pump, you also would have three ports. Now the bigger one is the inlet port that would go to the windshield washer fluid tank, and the two smaller ones, these would go through the firewall and up to the squirters to spray fluid onto the windshield. As we look at the outside of the truck through the inner cowl, you can see the rotating arm comes through the firewall and connects to these wiper transmission arms by this clip. Now as the motor turns on, these transmission arms move back and forth, causing these spline shafts to spin. And then our wiper arms would be slid over the top of the spline shafts, and that's what causes our wipers to sweep across the windshield. So let's say you do remove your wiper motor out of the dash and you find that it has four terminals versus three that should be in there. Well, that's no big deal. These four terminal motors, they came in pre-67 trucks. You can still use them in the 67 to 72. On these though, you would only use the left and center terminals. Leave that far right one open. So when we take a closer look, the pump and the motor itself, they get all the power from the yellow wire that comes from the fuse panel and goes to the pump and the motor itself. All the rest of the terminals, these are gonna be grounds for high speed, low speed, the pump, and to return the wipers back to the parked position when they're turned off. It is imperative that we get all the wires in the correct position or the pump or the motor's not gonna operate properly. It's also imperative that you mount the windshield wiper switch. That way it connects ground between the motor and the switch itself. Now we needed to find a way to go through and ground the motor too because it's mounted to the firewall with these rubber pads. So there is a spot right here with a brass ring and it has a little strap that mounts to the motor. So once we run the bolt in, that's gonna make our ground. So this is a really important part where a lot of guys get screwed up is they have their wires in the wrong positions on the pump and the motor itself. So we have this motor installed to the firewall and properly. So we have a single and a double black plug that both go to the motor, and then we have a double brown plug that goes to the pump itself. When we turn the key on, this yellow wire is gonna give us constant power from the fuse box, and all the rest of these are gonna be grounds. Now the black, the light blue, and the dark blue are all gonna be connected to the wiper switch at the dash. So when we turn it on to low speed, we are gonna be grounding out the black and the light blue wires. When we want high speed, we're just gonna be grounding the light blue. And when we wanna actuate the pump, we're gonna be grounding out the dark blue wire. If we don't have these wires in the correct position, the blues on the top and the yellows on the bottom, you're gonna run into all sorts of problems. So now that we're all finished up with this wiring voodoo, let's actually go through and remove one of these motors from the truck. Now the first option I'm gonna show you, I think it's the best option, why? Because it's the easiest. If you're restoring your truck and have it completely blown to pieces, this would be the time to change the pump out. Even if your pump still works, I still would think about replacing it for a newer one now. That way you don't run into problems down the road. If you have your outer cowl panel off or your instrument cluster out, this is gonna be a pretty easy task. So the first thing I do is grab your smartphones and take a picture here of the inner cowl. That way you can see how the transmission arms mount to the rotating arm of the motor and how the clip was installed. Then jump inside the cab and take a picture of all the wiring and how the plugs went into the motor and pump itself. That way when you're going to put it all back together, you're like, I can't remember what to do. 
it's going to save you a lot of headache in the end. Now that I have the outer cowl off, this is going to be real easy to get into the inner cowl. Now what I want to do is go through and pop this clip off that's going to be holding on the transmission arms to the actual rotating arm of the wiper motor. And it is important that you pay attention which one goes on top. And then pull both of those off and we'll move inside of the truck. So now that we're inside of the truck, we can go through and go ahead and remove all the plugs from the motor and pump. Then you're going to need a 5 16th socket and ratchet and we'll start removing the three mounting bolts. And when you get the last one out, you're going to have to rotate a little bit to bring the rotating arm through the firewall. Once you get your newer replacement motor, you want to make sure and compare them that they are exactly the same. And one thing that I didn't talk to you guys about yet was the park position on these motors. So when we turn these wipers off, they need to go back to the park position. Now these have park indicators on the rotating arm. There's a small little dot here, and then there's a hash mark right here. So when we go to install these, we need to ensure that this hash mark on the rotating arm is within five degrees of this vertical hash mark on the motor. And then we'll reinstall it. So option number two, it sucks, but we're gonna try to go through and get this wiper motor out without taking the outer cowl off. Now that is gonna be a challenge. What I'd first do if you have a nice paint job is get some painter's tape or masking tape and tape off some of these cowl openings. You're gonna need a flat blade screwdriver. It needs to be magnetized or you're gonna need a small magnet and some type of long needle nose pliers. What we're gonna try to do is go through these cowl openings, pry off the clip and then remove the transmission arms. That way we can detach it from the rotating arm of the motor. Yeah, shouldn't be any problem at all. If you hold your tongue just right, it seems to go a little bit better. Ooh, got one arm. I don't know how I'm going to get them back on. That's going to be the problem, though. One came off good. Almost! Success. So now that we have everything disconnected here in the inner cowl, we're able to jump to the inside of the truck and try to pull the motor out. Now, I would recommend that you do some stretching or some light yoga because this is gonna be tough. You're gonna have to shoehorn yourself down into the floorboard of this truck and try to shimmy your arm up into the dash panel. Now, you're gonna run into AC ducts, wiring, and all sorts of things. You might have to just go through and pull that instrument cluster. That way you can gain access to the motor itself. It's still gonna be pretty tight, but you'll just do it and remove it like we did in step one. So it can be done. It just takes a little, little finesse. Yahtzee. 18 minutes. That it's not very fast. So our third option is gonna be removing the motor from inside the cab. We're gonna be leaving the exterior cowl on, but the way this one's gonna work is we won't be removing the transmission arms or the clips. We're gonna do everything from under the dash. To do that, we're gonna loosen all three of our 5 16th bolts. Once you get each of those out, we're gonna kinda of let the motor dangle from the transmission arms. Then we're gonna need to get a 7 16th uh, wrench and let this rotate a little bit. And we're gonna try to come in here and take the rotating arm right off of the motor. Now it may be a little stiff, but we're gonna start to rotate this off and just make sure you don't drop the nut inside the inner cowl. That'll be kind of a pain, but you can still probably access it with a magnet. And don't drop the motor on your toes. Once you get that off, you may have to come in and pry that rotating arm off the motor itself. And then it's off. And then you'll go through, take your replacement motor. Again, make sure it matches up. Make sure you get the rotating arm 
into the park position if you can and line the wipers up that way. Oh yeah, and when you go to reinstall this, you're probably gonna have to have somebody from the outside sticking a screwdriver down on that rotating arm because it's gonna be real wobbly in there and it's gonna be hard to go through and to get that to mount back through there. So once you get that wedged on there and someone's push pushing a screwdriver down, then hopefully you can get your fingers back in here to get that nut on and then tighten it with the wrench. So truly, it doesn't matter which option you choose. They all kind of suck in their own way. Now, I'd always go with option number one, which is the easiest option where the truck's blown apart and you can have that swapped out in about 10 minutes. Now, I'd probably go with option number two next where you're fishing through the cowl opening with a magnet and a screwdriver. It'd still seem way easier than diving up underneath that dash and trying to take that rotating arm off with a wrench. I don't know how you'd do it if you actually had a dash in the truck with wires and AC lines and ducts and stuff like that. It'd just be a real bear. Now, another thing to remember, if you guys are swapping these motors out, go ahead and swap the pumps as well. But don't forget to prime the pumps. That, and if you buy an old truck that's been sitting for a long time, just pull all the lines off and blow some fresh air through them. Just make sure you don't blow air backwards through the pump where you damage the diaphragm. So let's say you guys don't want to put a pump back into your old ride. That's no big deal. If you have a new motor that has the pump on it already, that's fine. I just leave it. Just don't hook the wires up to it. But I would tape them off that way you don't have some type of short because remember, the yellow wire is hot all the time. Now if you have a new motor and you really want to remove it, just go ahead and remove the whole pump itself and then just install it the same way you would with just the motor. Now let's talk about some troubleshooting. A lot of the problems that we have with these wiper motors are just that people are sticking the wires in the wrong orientations on the terminals. That, we also have some bad grounds. Either the motor's not grounded or we have a bad ground at the switch on the dash. Last but not least is actually the switch itself. It's not uncommon for those switches to go bad after all those on and off and wash cycles over the 50 plus years. So don't forget to check the switch as well. Well, I sure hope this video has helped some of you guys that have been struggling with these old wiper motors. And if any of you know of easier ways to remove and install these things, please type it down the old clickety-clack. That way we can all learn. If you guys haven't, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. Sure helps a guy out. And if you guys would be interested in seeing how to bench test one of these old wiper motors, let me know and I'd be glad to show you. I appreciate your time and thanks for watching.